the general secretary of the National Democratic Congress, Johnson Asirin. It's good to see you sir, join us uh, in studio. Um, first Thank of you all, you've heard the vice president a uh, moment ago uh, talk about reasons why government is making that U-turn. It's a U-turn because the NPP government, um, when you were running the program, did not believe that was the solution to our economic woes. Now the vice president says there are two major issues from the external point, which is COVID-19 and the Russian-Ukraine war, uh, a reason for which we have to turn to the IMF. Then he adds another electorate blaming the NDC administration, as well John Mahama administration, for the mismanagement of the banking sector and then points to the payment of excess capacity. Do you agree with the vice president when he says, well, it's partly your fault as well? Well, thank you very much, my brother, and um, good evening to listeners. So unfortunately, we have come to a point where unless I don't have anything doing, in which case I want to engage in some entertainment, that's the only time I listen to <laughs> Dr. Baumia. You see, if I, so this afternoon, I didn't listen to him at all because Unfortunately, he has become still, and he doesn't seem to recognize that he has become still. It may be out of disrespect for Ghanaians that he still insists on saying what he has been saying. But let me ask you and through you to him a few questions. But I, I don't speak for the vice president, well, you agree. So he spoke about payment of excess capacity, banking cleanup and all that, being responsible for the huge debt overhang. I just want to ask a simple question. Since when did he become aware of these figures? Was it after 2020 or before the 2018 where he was touting himself of having, uh, you know, built a better economy? I believe that your mama didn't come back in 2020 or 2019 to do anything, mm -hmm. you understand? So if after six years in office, you are still blaming predecessors, it means that you have no clue as to why you went into the elections to become a leader in the first place. Were you expecting because, an apology from the vice president to, to start off with? Well, the person doesn't want to even admit where he's wrong. So you can't even uh, proceed to be talking about apologies. You just leave him like a donkey who is crying that grass is blue. You don't argue with him. Just leave him. If everybody knows that grass is green and you meet a donkey who is arguing vehemently that grass is blue, if you like, let us go to the, 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 uh, the Lion King to determine whether grass is blue or not blue. You don't argue with that person. Because every Ghanaian knows that, um, you know, he has lost credibility. And if we were in a, a well-functioning democracy, people like that should be leaving their offices. You feel the vice president should be resigning by now? Because the things he has said, uh, you know, Politics or democracy is about trust in our leadership. So if you are running a system where you cannot even trust your leaders, they say this today, tomorrow, they say a different thing. Mm. Then how are we expected to trust in the solutions that they are prescribing? The feeling of some is because you need to accept, you need to accept mm. the diagnosis, the causes of a disease mm. before you take the medication. But if the person is talking about causes which are not actually the causes, mm. it means that he will be prescribing the wrong medication for you. So that is why we have been saying that, look, the very set of economic managers who brought us into this mess cannot be relied upon to take us out of the mess. So before uh, any IMF program or whatever, can be swallowed by Ghanaians with all its hardship. Ghanaians must know that we have a new set of people 
whose word they can trust. And you go to the extent of asking the vice president to resign. Some say this is usual of any other politician. You promise, no, no, promise no, no, and no. you fail. No, no, so no, 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 this no, no. is just one of, of, of such When cases. You, you, you say something is black and it turns out to be white, too many times, you have lost credibility and you help yourself by resigning from the economic management team. He shouldn't be there at all. You understand? So because we are in a certain mess and um, we have been told that we are bringing the IMF to help us to implement certain austerity measures that will take us out of the mess. This austerity will involve hardship and others. So you need leaders who will be able to convince the population that Look, these are the right set of measures that will take us out of where we are. And those leaders must be trustworthy. The people must have trust in them. So if you are dealing with leaders in whom the people have lost trust, the people will not accept it. And that is why you are seeing the turbulence you are seeing in the economy, on the labor front and the other thing, because the simple fact is that they can no longer trust in the word Government. It's surprising that you're fixated on the vice president, particularly when we've I'm had uh, as in well, managers uh, of, of the, the economy. Uh, economy. But we've had, for instance, from former the vice president. president. Yes, <laughs> there's a vice yeah. president. There's this. Well, and I, I was just coming to that because we've had from, for instance, former president John Ramani Mahama. He says President Akufado must consider a reshuffle, for instance, as part of the solution to the problem. Yes. So beyond the resignation, uh, do you have a sense of some of the ministries that perhaps we need to do away with and some of the ministers that we need to change immediately? You see, there are the, I, I've talked broadly about the managers of the economy. There are a set of man, uh, ministers who are on the economic management team, which has delivered this disastrous uh, consequence. So they should not be there. You see, because if you are going to give the same set, and these are people who keep on defending their decisions when they know that their decisions are responsible for bringing us this far. See, leadership is about choices, it's about judgment, and so on. And you are not going to have a situation where there is nothing on the international front, as if there will be a period where the international situation will remain stagnant, nothing changes. You are not going to have it. So if you opt to go to lead a country that is operating within an international situation, you should take those conditions as given, the possibility that there will be disruption here, left and right, and design your policy to uh, provide buffers that to uh, take care of such unforeseen situations. Let me tell you, we are operating in the same international environment like our neighbors, Cote d'Ivoire, mm. uh, you know, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, Togo, and all that. Do you know that as we sit here, petroleum products in Ghana are more expensive than any other uh, country in West Africa? And indeed, I just returned from the, you know, Brown Lahafo and Upper East. All, almost all the fuel stations in some of the districts have collapsed. They have converted the, the fuel stations into base for drying, uh, you know, uh, rice. And rather, people are importing, smuggling fuel from Burkina Faso to Ghana because of the price differentials. People are now smuggling fuel from Cote d'Ivoire to Ghana. You ask yourself, are these countries not also operating in the same environment? So if you are saying that it is because of that environment that fuel prices are high in Ghana, you are not communicating to But anybody. you do agree. You are disrespecting the intelligence of Ghanaians. But you agree that the effects have been telling on a number of economies. You're just uh, returning from that international conference, Socialist yes. Interna yes. International, uh, and I'm sure that you got a sense of what's been happening to other nations yes. across the world. COVID-19 has been a major justification for many governments across the world, including the latest, which is the Russian-Ukrainian war. So is the vice president not justified nobody, in claim to Nobody is saying that COVID-19 or Russian-Ukraine war 
has no impact on uh, the global economy. That's not what we are saying. We are talking about how much impact. How can you say the impact is also different across the globe? Because you have frontline states that rely on Russia or Ukraine for energy and other things. We don't rely on Russia or Ukraine for energy supplies. So you cannot come here to say that if the energy supply to Germany has been cut and there are difficulties in Germany, we who don't, who don't rely on <laughs> Ukraine or Russia for anything, that we must also have the same effect in the same measure. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. There are, and that's why I'm demonstrating that you compare with your colleagues in the sub-region, because Cote d'Ivoire is here and others. If you are comparing uh, the impact on NATO countries, because NATO is virtually at war with Russia. So a country which is at war, and you are <laughs> enjoying your peace, and uh, you have very little to do with the countries as well. Is Ghana supplying uh, 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 weapons to Ukraine or Russia? No. Are we contributing anything from our budget to support Ukraine or Russia? The answer is no. America is contributing a lot of weapons and so on. And it costs money. It will impact on their economy. The European countries have been uh, buying gas and other things because of the embargo, they, they will, the, 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 the supply, there will be supply disruptions in their power sector and that uh, costs money to replace and all that. So in this particular case, if you want to assess the impact of Russia, Ukraine, you must be, uh, or COVID, you must be comparing with the countries which are in the same right. situation. That's why I'm referring you to Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, Liberia, <laughs> Guinea, Mali, and all those countries. These are countries you can compare with. But don't jump here and be comparing us with Americans. Now, if you are comparing us with Americans and the Europeans, have you taken the trouble to find out the salaries or wage rates in those countries as compared to Ghana. So if workers are now demanding that, well, your yardstick is America, Europe, and the other countries. So give us the salaries for America, Europe, and the other countries. What will be your response? So you see, if I were the vice president, I would be quiet. Because if you have been badly exposed you will better save the remaining image by being quiet. And at least there's hope for us now as a nation. The International Monetary Fund has just uh, concluded the first phase of negotiations uh, with uh, the, the Republic of Ghana. In fact, we understand they met uh, parliamentarians yesterday. Yeah. Uh, the fund has issued a statement indicating their readiness to support the country out of this uh, economic crisis. What, what's the expectation of the NDC as we move I'm into that, that austerity look, plan? The austerity plan will involve certain actions that the implementers should take. You understand? First of all, if you are going to dish out some austerity measures and you expect the population to swallow these measures, you must be seen by the population to be credible. So when you say A, it means A. When you say B, it means B. You seem to be stressing but on that word credibility. Yeah, it is very, very... Is it the very, case that you doubt the, the figures and, and what it... It's not about our, just our the figures. Just two or three weeks ago, you have a government and its uh, functionaries shouting that it's only countries that have failed that go to IMF. So they are never going to go to IMF. Be, we will believe you. So if the following day, there is the need to go to IMF, and you, the same person, come saying that now IMF is the best thing that has happened to this country. How do you expect the, the people to swallow this? Elsewhere, all those people would have resigned. So if they don't resign and they are there, and you expect them to now say things that the population will believe, whatever they will be saying today in the course of implementing 
the new package. How is the ordinary citizen going to differentiate between what they say today and what they have said in the past and to, to, to accept that what they are saying today is true but what they have said in the past is false? A person's uh, behavior or conduct, future behavior or future conduct, is judged by his past conduct. So credibility is very, very important. Leadership is about uh, trust between the leaders and the led. When that trust is broken, it is very difficult to repair. Ahead of the IMF program, uh, the minority in parliament was asking government not to go ahead with the electronic transactions levy. It was a controversial mm -hmm. uh, tax measure that government was banking its hopes on, believing that with the e-levy, we may not have to turn to the IMF. Now the IMF is in the offing. Is it the expectation of the NDC that the e-levy will be scrapped immediately? No, that is one of the reasons why they should apologize to the nation. Because they went around all over the place, knowing that even the, the deficit they were seeking to, to finance, it was in the neighborhood of 40 million. And the tax measure you were proposing, you yourself knew that it could rake in a maximum of 7 million, 8 million. So why at all would you throw that in the eyes of Ghanaians that when you immediately you have that tax, whose maximum return should be 7 million, immediately you have it, all your problems will be solved, including uh, you know, bridging the gap of 40 million. So that is pure dishonesty. And then when we were arguing that this is not the way to go, there are other better ways to go. You better explore those means. He said, no way. So let's stop it and let's explore other means. They never, then they started blaming everybody and started promising that with e-levy, we'll be able to pay road contractors when you know that that e-levy money cannot even pay one third of the amount you owe contractors. With e-levy, you'll be able to pay common fund. With e-levy, you'll be, so it's like e-levy became a panacea for everything. You knew you were being economical with the truth. You have now been exposed. So you cannot be relied upon to speak the truth to the to, to, to Ghanaians any longer. So if I were the president, even if I don't resign, and I want I must find those who implemented my economic policy for blame and scapegoating. Mm. Drive them away and bring new set of people in whom the nation would have some confidence. Mm. Look. Look at what happened. The situation in 83 was worse than this. And the measures which were implemented by President Rawlings mm. at that time were harsher than whatever we were seeing. So now. you agree that... But because the leader, right. the leader was trusted, the leader was seen to be living in a lifestyle that depicts that we are in hardship. People were prepared to buy us. I was just about to uh, come to one that. One month ago, you were telling yeah. us that the, when it comes to the comfort and safety of the president, the cause doesn't matter. And I was just about to come so to that. So why should the cause matter with workers? Right. I was just about to come to that because uh, over the mm -hmm. weekend, the president responded to the labor agitations that we're experiencing. He mm -hmm. says, well, I'm having to cut or slash my salary um, by some 30%. And even in terms of uh, public expenditure, we've done quite a lot in terms of saving the public purse. So the workers would also have to make some sacrifices. How much have they saved? That was the justification. How much have the they person. saved? They, they just talk about it and that's the end of the matter. You must be seen to be taking measures that are verifiable. For instance, you have but the largest, the fact you agree, the largest the fact you agree number that, that largest there's been a number slash of in ministers. public expenditure. No, there has been an announcement. Oh, that's last. That's all. What are we verifying? Even the people are, have been caught cooking figures. So the, the, the thing is that credibility is important for, for you to carry the population along. As I was giving the example of President Rollins, he was seen in Kaki and mounting uh, top of Land Rovers 
and buying kilewele and other things, roasted corn by the road. But you agree the times are because different Because he says that this is the situation we right. are in. Mm. So the president must be seen to be, uh, and then urging his ministers to do things for demonstrative effect. You understand? What prevents the president from slashing the number of ministers he has to a manageable uh, number? There have been accusations of corruption against certain ministers, uh, health minister, uh, several of the ministers, and so on. If you want to establish your credibility with the people, you cannot be taking money, you cannot leave the corrupt people who have been found to be, have embezzled money there and say that I'm going to take your money and giving it to the same people. You understand? Mm. So you must take harsh measures. And, and uh, so that everybody will see you as serious. But Those the experts say that if we need to take harsh measures, obviously we need to cut down on public expenditure. That would affect the demand, for instance, from organized labor, asking for a 20% cost of living allowance. I'm saying that... Uh, you agree to have a toll on, on, the, on the budget, right? Organized labor mm. is demanding what they are demanding because it's like animal farm. There are the pigs who are enjoying, and then you have the others, donkeys who are working. If they have any reason to believe that government and its functionaries appreciate the hardship, and they are prepared to take the lead in, 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 in tightening their belts, cutting their expenditure, and these measures are verifiable, then Government will get the, the, you know, the support of labor because you'll be able to explain to them that there's nothing. But if you say that, oh, there's nothing, you tighten your belt. And we see you enjoying and losing your belt. Nobody will, will listen. So how so do we that's why the we, crisis? That's how do we why I'm saying that when you are talking about cutting, right. you know, um, I used to work in, uh, as a marketing manager in one of the Gihok subsidiaries yes. before, right. <laughs> before. And the reason why those government corporations collapse, do you know why? When there is a problem, a mismatch of expenditure and uh, revenue, they say let's reduce costs. Immediately they say reduce costs. The management level, they don't touch anything. They go there to reduce the number of workers on the factory floors, mm. thinking that if they do that, they will be able to balance. But forgetting that, when you reduce the number of workers who are actually engaged in production, over which you are parasiting, you cannot make a headway. So our, our overhead cost of running the country is way too high. Mm. Which so that to is what we need to slash. It is not now that I started talking about it. I've been talking about the overhead cost. And, and part of the concerns for the NDC has also been about the uh, other government policies that are draining the budget, for instance, including the free senior high school policy. We're beginning to see how it's biting on the economy and even uh, some of the school, uh, school children, as we understand now, are not able to get uh, the necessary food supplies. We understand government is doing something about it. As of today, some deliveries are being done. But the belief or some expects is that this is the opportune time for us to review the free senior high school policy. What's the take of the NDC on that? It's interesting that I'm hearing review on Joy, a Joy platform again. This is the second time that we are discussing review. The last time I came here, the review was coming from the mouth of uh, President Mahama, and it was interpreted at Joy here to mean cancellation. Now that it is coming from the mouth of Akufuado, has it adopted a new meaning? Is it cancellation or we are still discussing my definition of review? That is the problem. Even when the signs were clear that whatever we were doing wasn't sustainable and we were calling for a review way back, more than three, four years back, any time we talked about review, 
He said that, oh, Mahama and his people want, are calling for the cancellation of, uh, you know, a free SHS. Let me tell you what. We are a social democratic party. And as you said, I'm vice president of Socialist International. Mm. So we understand these interventions better. But we also understand that these interven social interventions must have an economic base. If the economic base is not there, and you try to implement uh, social interventions which has not no economic base, they are unsustainable. What you achieve is that they, they collapse because of lack of funding, and when they collapse, the hardship they bring to the, to the population is worse than when the thing has not been offered to them at all. We did these social interventions during the Fourth Republic. During the Fourth Republic, education was free, healthcare was free, mm. most everything was free. Now, after the first coup d'etat, which incidentally was led by the grandfathers of the MPP as we have it now, then they took the decision to slash all these things on account of lack of funding to support them. So if we have, you know, uh, you know practiced something mm. which has crashed, the, the years between the time they were, those social interventions were scrapped. I was in P2 when school fees was reintroduced mm. after the 1966 school. Right. So the hardship was very great. The hardship brought about by the cancellation of free health care. We went through it and various stages in preparing to come and land at health insurance. We went through various stages up to cash and carry and so on before we could come here. Mm. So having gone through that experience, we cannot forgive ourselves for leading the country through the same experience which, led, which is going to lead us to hardship. And so what's that one magic one that would solve all of these feeding challenges the NDC has with the See, free senior high school there policy? There is no uh, way of calling rose that it will not smell sweet. Whatever the simple logic in managing the economy or your personal life is that live within your means. So if you are living within your means, you won't have these difficulties. If you are earning 10 CDs and you insist on spending 20 CDs a month, the first few months, you will think that you are okay. When the repayment of the first loan, you may have to finance it with a loan. Mm. But when the repayment of the loan catches up with you, you will see that even your 10 CDs would have to go into repayment of loan and you will be left with nothing. Mm. That is what we have done to ourselves now. So our advice is that you cannot run the country and then the contest for uh, you know, elections become a contest of who promises free, free things. Mm. There is no free lunch in America. If you believe, there must be prioritization. If you believe there are social interventions or social problems that you need to solve. Mm. If you cannot solve all of them, you look through and find out which is the most urgent one to solve, which I can finance. Mm. Then you begin with that and grow your economy in tandem. When you get to a point where the economy is strong enough mm. to, to be able to carry another intervention, you bring it on board. But if you just time. go there and say that, oh, it's just a contest of who offers mm. many things. Because of what they had done, mm. there are occasions when we were drawing our manifesto, you see party food soldiers calling you. Can you also promise this, can free this, free that? Somebody says we should be paying everybody in Ghana who is, so we, we created an impression that it is possible for government to offer things free, mm. which will not be paid for by the citizens. And, that's and that why, is why, that's why we you are where believe we are. we're not living within our means. But in recent times, mm. we've heard from some assigns of government and also some government officials indicate clearly 
clearly that part of the challenge has been the posture of the NDC and how the NDC is frustrating, quote-unquote, government business. The e-levy as a revenue measure, for instance, mm -hmm. you've been criticised of uh, sabotaging government, a, a reason for which <laughs> the revenues did not accrue over the period. Now, former President John Romani Mahama has announced that the minority in parliament will find, uh, would actually fight the syndicated loan. Uh, yeah. We're getting indications that mm -hmm. your members of parliament are calling for a review. Why are you frustrating government in terms of its revenue measures? The government has engaged in this borrowing spree, which has led us into a certain situation. And we are preventing the government from deepening the situation. You are saying we are frustrating the government. Then let's allow them to continue but they need funds and, to and accumulate the debts. Look, the e-levy. When we advise them and they never listen, when they got the e-levy, they did bring in whatever they wanted. And if you, you are lucky to have an opposition which can look through the crystal ball and say that the solution you are looking for is not found in this e-levy. Let's look elsewhere. And you, st you still think that that is frustration of your work. Eventually, they use undemocratic means to get what they want. But what is the resource now? It's there for all of us to but see. But you agree that government... How much has France. come in? How much has come in? What is the work of opposition? Opposition's work is that when government is implementing a policy and you know that that policy will not achieve the outcome that the government is promising, you have to stop it. So it is by checking and balancing what government does that you get the government to pursue policies that will be in the interest of the nation. If anybody is calling that as a frustration of government business, then we should, because when we call, even we call ministers to come and account for monies, if that, um, and then if they don't account, we will not uh, approve anything further. If that, all that amounts to uh, frustrating government business, why are we uh, worried about embezzlement and corruption? It is our duty to hold government to account. So COVID in Ghana cannot be said to be the, you know, the cause of these problems, honestly, because it has been demonstrated that the monies that COVID brought in mm -hmm. were far, far in excess of government expenditure on COVID. So if you are talking about its impact on our budget, the figures don't bear you out. If we are talking about the disruption of international supply chains and all that and its impact on our economy, mm -hmm. yes, there is some impact. But there are countries in our sub-region who uh, have gone through, lived through these uh, supply chain disruptions, and they are doing far, far better than we are doing now. Mm -hmm. So that cannot be the cause. If you are comparing to countries that are engaged in war, NATO countries are engaged in war with Russia, and they are paying money, spending money, uh, implementing sanctions, and Russia is hitting back and so on. So they, and they are buying weapons that will impact on their budgets. If you are comparing that one to Ghana, which has not supplied anything to Ukraine, Ukraine, Russia is not attacking us, Ukraine is not attacking us, Cote d'Ivoire is living nearby. How come, if it is a Ukraine war, how come that uh, the prices of uh, 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 petroleum products are cheaper now. For the first time since I was born, there has never been any day that Ghana's petroleum products are more expensive than... than uh, and yet you feel we're not, we not seeing the impact. So let's talk about priorities for government uh, going into the future. The government has... Uh, embarked on a number of uh, projects over the years, but one of the very latest one, which is drawing a lot of controversy, has got to do with the decision by President Ekufado to push through the National Cathedral Project. I'm sure that you've been monitoring developments on uh, the well, funding and it, the it controversy is, it surrounding is, it. That's We're just two years away from a major elections uh, in 2024. Of, that is one just hold on for me, sir. Uh, we know that obviously if the elections does not go in the favor of the NPP, that project, for instance, would not be mm -hmm. completed. It must be done by another regime, obviously, 
Uh, it could be the NDC if you win the 2024 elections. What's the long-term vision and position of the NDC regarding such a national monument? Leadership, I have told you, I want to repeat again, is about choices and judgment. So, people are elected in government to make policy choices. So, you have limited resources and you have to decide how best to apply those limited resources so that it can generate the best outcomes to the taxpayers and the citizens. So, if you decide that the situation we are in your priority uh, is to spend money on building a national cathedral. It is your decision. That, that's it. If you decide, that's why I'm saying that you have a plethora of uh, ways of spending money and uh, social interventions and so on. Social interventions are not bad, except that you undertake those your economy can finance and sustain. So if you come to realize that your economy cannot sustain all the social interventions, it is up to you to look at your social intervention and reorganize your priorities. We are not to tell you how to organize your priorities. You have to organize your priorities and see that this one is uh, better than this. This one will bring in more this, uh, the, uh, you know, benefits than this. So they have to do that. If at the end of the day, they reorganize their priorities and uh, the top priority is National Cathedral, let them, let them push it. See? But looking at that project, my, my question was about mm -hmm. the NDC and what plans you have for when it. When we come, we will look at our national priorities. If it finds space as a national priority, we will... For now, public funds have been committed to that. The fear is that since we've committed a, 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 some funding to that, we let's continue with the project. We don't know that public funds have been... You're not aware as a political party? We know that public funds have been misapplied to it because there are ways of committing public funds properly. The National Cathedral has never featured in our budget estimates. It has never been named as a public a, a state project. It has always been referred to as some private initiative. There are ways of, you know, planning and implementing government projects. If you doubt it, go and look at the books. You see how uh, National Theatre was built. Mm. <laughs> you see how uh, International Conference Center was built. And the others, Presidential Palace and all, you see how they were all built. And try and compare whether National Cathedral can fit in as a, a, you know, a state project. Mm. If it is not a state project, then we all should be worried about how state funds got invested in a non-state project. Because there are rules as to how state funds are, uh, are used to finance projects when you disperse state funds. In fact, the Constitution says that there are only two ways through which you can take money from the consolidated fund. Mm. One is under the authority of parliament. And the authority of parliament is expressed in several ways. Parliament, it could be a case that parliament has enacted a law that creates some institution. And parliament can put in there that that institution must be financed uh, from monies from the consolidated fund. But as of now... Or when the collection is done, a certain percentage should, should go there. Right. Then it means that parliament's approval for that money 
was done when the law was being passed. The other way is through a budget and the appropriation bill, where you bring the estimates of whatever projects you want to undertake, whatever expenditure, and so on, for Parliament to look at and then approved and incorporated in the Appropriation Act, which is an act of Parliament. Apart from that, the Constitution has created the Constitution can, can say that the charge and expenses of this institution that is being created by the Constitution should be directly on the Consolidated Fund. You are talking about the expenses of the judiciary and other... For the sake of time, you, your argument is all of these things have not been done. They have not been done and they have, they have never been in a procurement process. Mm. We have procurement laws. There is no evidence that uh, either the consultancy services or the brick and mortar contractors or in any of the contracts have been subjected to procurement procedures. So, so you know the breach of procurement right. uh, procedures has consequences. Mm. If you don't know, go and ask the Electoral Commission. So uh, as we sit here, mm -hmm. I don't think that legally the National Cathedral can be called a state project. Really? Yes, because there's no evidence that it's a state project. Uh, let's now talk about the NDC and the 2024 elections. Um, it's just two years away. You've announced the timetable uh, for your reorganization process. What's the end game of the uh, NDC? Where do you see yourself in 2024? Still in opposition? No. We are ready to capture power. And that is why every step of the way we are careful not to make a mistake that will lead to the blown up of our chances. So where we are now, we are reorganizing our branches, 39,000 of them. Mm. It's a huge exercise. And we don't want to rush through it. And that is why when people were, you know, calling on us, what are you doing? MPP mm -hmm. is getting to national level. And MPP is a different political organization from NDC. Their structures are different. The number of elections they, held, they, uh, they hold are different from those we hold. We hold more elections than them, and we elect more people than them. So they can do their, their things. And they, at times, they don't care about the procedures leading to elections. They care about the outcomes. So they, they think that the end justifies the means. If Nanado wants this person to be national chairman, that is the target. Do everything to make sure. That but, but that should be their business. I'm talking about the. That's agency. their business. Right. That's what I'm saying. Mm. So we are not competing with them. Mm. So today, uh, as of yesterday, right. I announced the beginning of the processes leading to um, the branch elections. Yeah. And again, we, we are organizing the elections in four phases. The first phase will cover the five northern regions. Then the second phase is in the middle, Bono, Bono East, um, Hafo, uh, Western, North and Western. Mm. Then the third phase will cover Central Region, Greater Accra, mm. Oti, and Volta. And then we have left Ashanti and Eastern region for special treatment. Which you would focus on later. Yes. But in the end, uh, you're hoping to capture powers you're telling me about. But your members of parliament, for instance, the minority leader, Harun Idrisa, is beginning to raise concerns even about the processes leading to the 2024 elections with regard to the use of the Ghana card um, for a possible registration onto the voter um, uh, role. What's the concern of the NDC, really? Are you scared that the Ghana card no, lacks no, credibility? No, 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 no. It is the duty of citizens. You see, if citizens uh, declare themselves as spectators and not part of the action, things will go wrong. You cannot have a functioning democracy. So we are being spectators. Our MPs have committed themselves 
to, uh, uh, no, not spectators. MPs have committed themselves to be citizens and participants in the game. So, and it is uh, public criticisms like that, that strengthens the paths of state institutions for them to function well. So wherever you see a state institution that is taking an action that uh, you know, seems to suggest that they are not performing their duty well, it is the responsibility of every citizen, particularly members of parliament, because parliament exists to one of its functions is to exercise oversight mm -hmm. over state institutions and the executive. So if they, there is the, the belief that electoral commission is doing something that goes against their mandate, then it is up to us. You've to not been to IPAC in a long time. Will you use that platform to, to channel your grievances on the Ghana IPAC account? is no longer a platform for channeling of any grievances. And that is why we consider that our present day amount to a waste of time. You see, IPAC was instituted when we were in government. And it provided a channel for consensus building, which will lead to the establishment of electoral rules and processes that will not be seen as favoring one side. We were in government. We had the majority in parliament. But because MPP at that time were not in parliament, mm. we felt that there must be a contrivance to bring them around. Yes. That's why we, we brought them there. So, but IPAC under this electoral commission has been reduced into information sharing platform. It is no longer a consensus building platform. So we have told them that if you have information to share, channel it through this means to us. Yes. And from there, they have been giving us drafts of everything that they are doing there. In fact, this law they want to pass. They the brought the, yes, they brought us the draft. What were you told? And then, I mean, they brought us the draft. And when you take the draft and you compare it with the final product they sent to parliament, there is no change. Even the comma hasn't changed. So if they are talking about the consensus they built by political parties, so when the political parties went there, what did they discuss? So will you resist the use of the Ghana card as a party? Well, you said uh, there is not enough time. Ghana card or citizen's ID card for, you know, identification for whatever purposes is a good thing. But it must be available to everybody. So why we are against it is that it's not the fact that we are, we are going to rely on Ghana card. Because eventually that is where all of us are going to go. But when the, 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 it is work in progress, some have gotten, some have not gotten. And you say that the, uh, the, the work in progress is what you are going to use. It means that Electoral Commission is working against its own obligations as imposed on them in the 1992 Constitution because one of their key obligations is to expand voter registration. So if you are deliberately going to adapt a policy that will rather resist voter registration, then you are working against the constitution. And again, so we can't fault them for doing that, but we, the go. pressure must be on the NIA. Right. They are not doing their work well. They have obligation to ensure that every citizen has the national ID card mm. so that it can be used for whatever purpose. So that is where the pressure should be. And that's the General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, Johnson Asiru Nkita. You have uh, just a minute to send your word, uh, I mean, solidarity to the NPP as they go uh, for their national elections this weekend? Uh, well, 30 seconds, briefly. I wish them well. I would have loved to be there myself. Oh, you would want to be there? I'll take oh, you there. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'll take you there. Will you go? But <laughs> the last time I went, it led to the defeat of Sir John. I don't want to go and see John Boadu off. Let me stay somewhere and let them go and do it. But mm. certainly, I'm sending a, 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 a fitting representative right. to go and express solidarity. So I wish them well. I'm grateful. Uh, and that's uh, Johnson and Sidney Kitia for you. Uh, but it's a wrap also here on the polls with me, Blessed Sukhan. There's more news for you at myjoyonline.com. Please stay on the Joy News channel.